Welcome to Inside Fall River. Inside Fall River is produced by Fall River Community Television, and it intends to provide television programming for, of, and by individuals and groups to celebrate the resources, the diverse people, the varied concerns, the abundant successes, and the shared potential and responsibility of the Fall River community. I am Stephen Kamara, and my co-host is Wendy Goff-Lip, Together, we will bring you interviews with interesting people about interesting places and activities that are happening inside Fall River. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on Inside Fall River, or if you have a group or topic that you would like to have discussed on Inside Fall River, contact me at Bristol Community College. Also, you may access Fall River Community Television on our website, on Facebook, or on Twitter. Enjoy Inside Fall River, and remember, your feedback to this program is welcomed and encouraged. Fall River Community Television is your community access television station, and it is committed to building community through communication. Thank you for supporting Fall River Community Television. And welcome to this edition of Inside Fall River. Uh, I'm Stephen Kamara, and as the host today, it's my pleasure to welcome our guest, uh, Sandy uh, Dennis. Uh, Sandy Dennis is our uh, coordinator of the Fall River Park Advocates and well-known in the community for many uh, different projects that she undertakes. But today we're going to speak uh, exclusively on her efforts uh, on behalf of Fall River Parks. And also James Botley. Uh, James Botley is... Uh, co-chair, uh, and I must admit to being the other co-chair, uh, of the Lower Highlands Historic Downtown Neighborhood Association, which has been in existence now for six or seven years, and uh, it's a very active association, and uh, Jim has been there since the beginning, and uh, he'll be talking uh, mostly about the Lower Highlands Historic Downtown Neighborhood Association adopting a parcel of land which uh, hopefully will become uh, another green space and beautiful space in our uh, great city. So uh, let's uh, begin with uh, Sandra just talking a bit about what is Fall River Park Advocates and what is the responsibility of this effort? Well, we are a member. First, I want to thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity, Steve. Um, but the Fall River Park Advocates, uh, we're members of the Urban Park Advocates, which is a program of the Trustees of Reservations. And our basic mission is to keep our parks and our open spaces clean and safe for the community. And we do that in a number of different ways. Well, let's go over some of those ways uh, that Fall River Park Advocates uh, has been improving uh, the quality of life that exists in the Fall River Parks. Okay, we started, I would say, about three years ago, and we implemented the citywide park cleanup. And what we did is we identified parks, and if, if the community had a particular park that they were interested in cleaning, um, I coordinated a cleanup for a particular Saturday. And we coordinated and worked with the Department of Public Works to give us supplies, bags, rakes, brooms, et cetera. And we grouped people together within those parks, assigned a park leader, captain. They would go to government center to pick up the supplies, bring it to their volunteers, and they would basically clean the parks of litter and debris, um, whether it be, you know, trash litter, paper litter, um, tree twigs, leaves, whatever. And then they would pile them in a particular area. DPW would pick them up, bring them to one central location, and get rid of it. Then we would uh, work with Mass in Motion, who was always generous to provide a barbecue at the end of the cleanup and t-shirts for everyone that volunteered. It was so successful. The first year, I would say, we had about 100 volunteers. Uh, last year we doubled that number and this year we actually had I'd say over 500 volunteers um, for the cleanup of the parks so every year it's grown it's almost doubled from year to year yeah great success and I know CD rec, uh, they, CD rec was comes, involved yes they actually come and they do all of the cooking for us mm -hmm. so they coordinate that whole end of it so we don't have to worry about that part of it uh, and they're always you know wonderful to work with Excellent. Now, Jim, uh, in the Lower Highlands Historic Downtown neighborhood, 
there are not that many parks that are within the boundaries of the Lower Highlands Historic Downtown uh, neighborhood area, but uh, there is something that's uh, in process. Is that true? Yes, there is. Uh, last, I believe it was last, in the winter time uh, in Forva, there's a road that goes from Duval Street up Durfee Street, and at the bottom of that area, there's a, a piece of parcel, it's a gr small area, and city was renting it out for contractors, and they were totally destroying the land, the grass, and everything else. So I decided, I think I'm trying to investigate and see if we can get this to be a park in our area, which we don't have a park. And if, if it's not that, it's pretty far out of our district, but it'll, it'll be included sooner or later because we're going to be expanding our boundaries. And uh, I decided to uh, work on this and talk to people and get it to be a, a park for our neighborhood, which I'm, I'm very proud of because I was working with a girl named Margie uh, Chikowski? Chikowski. She also mm -hmm. helped me uh, start g getting things together. And uh, it's moving on pretty good. The grass has uh, been planted. We're going to have trees planted, about 10 trees. Uh, it, we're going to have park benches in there, uh, new lighting. And it's just going to be a nice place because, to me, it's a major entrance from the Wall Street into the Lower Highlands and Fall River. So to be, have it dressed up the way we'd like it to be, and it's going to be really nice for everybody. Great. Now, I understand at the last meeting of the Neighborhood Association, uh, they have not finally acted on the adoption of this space, but it seems as if they're moving in that direction, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure next month, June 6th, uh, is our meeting. And uh, they will be adopting because we pretty well finalized it, but uh, I think there was a little bump in the road with the name of it. We haven't really decided what we want to call it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to go forward in, the, in June. Excellent. Well, we're temporarily and for today, we're calling it the Green at Driffy Street. And uh, there is a new sign that was also made welcoming people to the Lower Highlands. And tell us how that sign came to be. That came to be, I was working with Perry Long and he was working with Durf, uh, Diamond High School kids, and they decided to um, give us a, a sign. It's called Historic Lower Highlands. It's a welcome sign. Welcome sign, and it's, it's really nicely made, and uh, it looks very nice. Now, Sandra, let's go into a little bit more of the specifics. Um, if a group in the community wants to adopt a park, are there still spaces that can be adopted? Absolutely, and, and just to kind of step back a little bit, after we did the first citywide cleanup, we realized that we needed to um, implement something to keep moving forward with the parks and keeping them clean. So what we did is we decided to implement the Fall River Adopt-A-Park program. Um, and I would say we have at least a half a dozen parks adopted and just this year alone we have another half dozen ready to be adopted and basically you need to be an organization or a business you cannot be just a regular individual to adopt a park um, you need to fill out the paperwork we work very closely with the floor of a parks department and DPW um, once you adopt a park um, it is a commitment and it is a responsibility of yours as an organization to adhere to the rules and the guidelines of the adopt a park program it's been very well received last year was our first year it was very successful I think it's brought a lot of attention uh, to the parks in the city I've seen a big difference in the maintenance of parks and even some of the smaller greens. And when I talk about this program, I encourage people to really, um, like Jim's doing, think about adopting those small places first. I mean, to, to take on a really big park, it's a lot of work just trying to get the volunteers. Um, you're required to clean them certain times, once a week, once a month, uh, and you do need to adhere and follow those rules because reporting has to be done to DPW and the Parks Department mm -hmm. um, to track it. But it, it's been very successful and it is great. I, it doubled from last year, uh, the number of parks, and we don't really advertise it enough, but it's nice, it would be nice to see some of our corporate partners adopt parks in the area. Uh, right now, we have mostly a lot of the nonprofit organizations um, that are adopting, but it would be nice to see some of the large organizations um, 
We are working with the Fall River Police Department, which is we're really excited about um, with Britland Park. So hopefully that adoption will go through shortly and we'll get the paperwork filled out. Well, that's good. Britland Park is in the backyard of the police department, yes. so an appropriate space yes. Uh, yes. and a great space, right, uh, great right along space. the Quickershan River. Yes, lots of activity going on um, along the Quickershan. A lot of activity going to be happening at Britland Park. Um, the city received the park grant this year, which I won't go into the details of that, uh, but it's an exciting thing for the city. So if someone wants to uh, consider, and we encourage uh, those of you who are listening, if you're connected to a group, uh, connected to a, uh, a, a club or a church group or a neighborhood group, or if you're not connected, then get in touch with one of your neighborhood associations and see if in fact they are connected to a possible park that may need to be adopted. And how would people get in touch with either you or whoever is um, uh, the actually contact? Actually, they would get in touch with me. I pretty much coordinate that whole program so they can you know, give me a call or they can send me an email. They can go up on the Forever Park Advocates Facebook page and message me. A uh, number of different ways I'm so easy to So what's the contact? Find. Is there a phone number or they an email? Can, they can contact me at 508 646 Three six two eight or D E N D E N L L C at Comcast.net. So it's Den Den L L C at Comcast.net because everyone forgets the second Den. Okay, um, so, so we'll uh, make sure that we uh, put that graphic out uh, so that people can yes. read it during uh, during the uh, viewing of this program. Thank you. And uh, Jim, if people want to get in touch with uh, you or get in touch with the Lower Highlands. Historic Downtown Neighborhood uh, Association in its effort. Uh, what is the contact information? I would be the contact person and my email address would be bartleyjw at juno.com. That's B-A-R-T-L-E-Y-J-W at juno, J-U-N-O dot com. And if there's any questions that I can answer for you, please contact me at that email address. Great, and I want to say that although it's not finally adopted, it will be adopted at the annual meeting uh, in June, uh, when this is being broadcast, uh, June 20th, in fact, uh, at 6.30 p.m. at the First Congregational Church. That's the church right at the corner of Rock and Cherry Street, and you enter through the Cherry Street entrance. So on June 20th, um, and much of the viewing of this particular edition will be uh, broadcast during the month of June, uh, we encourage people to get involved. And basically, the boundaries are the waterfront, uh, President Avenue is on the north end, Highland Avenue and High Street is on the east end, and then Central Street, uh, actually uh, Pleasant Street going down Pecasset Street back to the waterfront, uh, uh, Anawan Street uh, is, is the southern boundary. So if you live in that section, or in fact, if you don't live in that section, or if you don't work in that section of town, but you want to see the center of the city, the Lower Highlands and Historic Downtown neighborhood succeed, then that would be uh, the neighborhood association that you can connect with. Um, finally, I want to uh, just go over a couple of other things. I know that recently uh, Park Advocates sponsored a, uh, a safety effort. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about uh, that. We just, sponsored... Just a couple of minutes left, so... Okay, uh, I'll talk fast. <laughs> we uh, sponsored Family Safety Instincts, and what it did was it showed... Um, people how to be aware of their surroundings and some basic self-defense tips and strike points because in attending a lot of the, uh, especially the neighborhood association meetings, they're always bringing up crime and safety. So we thought that it would be nice to be able to offer them some kind of a free class um, to make them feel a little bit safer and more comfortable when they're walking, and that particularly was a in the park. It, it, was, it, was, it was a good success. It was a great class. It was just the right size. Uh, the instructors were impressed. We had Sergeant Smith from the police department that attended, which was great. He was able to do some demonstrations with the instructors. Um, so we're hoping that some of the groups business actually one business light o'lear is actually going to be offering it to their employees we had business people there as well mm -hmm. and i want to just mention one quick thing sure um, i would encourage everyone to go on to our facebook and become a friend because we put all types of events including things going on up in the bio reserve as well and i know that the Durfee high school kids not to leave out the youth because they were a critical part 30 seconds on on how Driffy gets involved. They, um, because of the litter problem, we are working with them to implement a litter campaign. The first part is already done with the logo and everyone 
will see it on the top of their recycle bins, their signs on the streets. The next phase is the actual, actual marketing campaign that we're going to be um, presenting. Excellent. Um, so that's it. Okay, well, we thank you very much. Uh, this edition of Inside Fall River uh, has featured the Fall River Park Advocates. And uh, you know now how to get in touch if you'd like to help out in keeping our parks uh, vibrant and clean. Hi, I'm Wendy Garf-Lipp from United Neighbors, and this is Inside Fall River. My guest today is Jim Soule, the president of the Preservation Society of Fall River. Hi, Jim. Thanks for coming today. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for having me here. So tell me a little bit about the Preservation Society. Uh, to go over some of the background, is the Preservation Society is a nonprofit 501c3 a charitable corporation. And we reformed about six years ago. There had been a Preservation Society uh, um, with a big presence in the 70s and 80s. And it had kind of lost some traction uh, for about 10 years. And we, like I said, we reincorporated uh, just about six years ago. Uh, the group is all volunteers. You know, we do fundraisers. We have grant writing occasionally uh, and memberships. But uh, myself, the board, uh, we all operate um, as volunteers. Great. Tell me a little bit about the Preservation Society's mission. What do you choose to accomplish? Well, uh, uh, by the word, our mission is to uh, foster and promote awareness of historically and architecturally significant properties in Fall River. So, of course, that's a lot of words. But the point is that Fall River has as much history and architecture as any other city in the country. And it's just not appreciated as much as it should be. And so we reformed the Preservation Society to create more awareness and buzz about that because we should be taking advantage of that history and architecture to save it because it's worthwhile saving, but also because it should be part of the, the economic engine in Fall River. So how do you see that? You see it as a tourist attraction? You see it, how, how does it fit its place as an economic engine? I do, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of different ways, but, but tourism is part of it. If you look at uh, Lizzie Borden, and is, does anyone say, is, is anything more big or right. talked about than Lizzie Borden? Right. That's history. Even before I moved to this area. You knew about I it. I knew Lizzie Borden came from Fall River. Right, right. Battleship Cove, one of the largest uh, naval museums in the country. Uh, that, that's history, mm -hmm. um, and it's huge, so we shouldn't take that for granted. Um, is there something unique about the architecture uh, and the historical houses in Fall River? Well, what's unique is the number of it. Mm -hmm. There's just a huge amount of it, and you'll hear people talk about the Highlands, the Highlands. The Highlands are great, but even most of our triple-deckers were built of an architectural style, and in a way, and with woods that can't be reproduced now that they are actually considered historically significant properties also, and those are found all over the city. Mm -hmm. I know you do a lot of work with historic branding and house plaques. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And I know you brought something to show us today did, as yeah. well. This is the house plaque, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. So the idea of the branding is that um, by using home pla house plaques and street signs, you start to uh, create that awareness, that buzz, whether it's uh, people who live in the city or people who are traveling through the city and they see things like this and that creates that branding. Oh yeah, look at that, the house plaque. Fall River is an historical city. It has historical homes, historical properties, has historical neighborhoods, and this is a historical neighborhood because you can see the street signs. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea of branding and most of this is you know, kind of simple stuff but it means a lot more than what most people realize. How old does your house have to be to be considered historic? And does it have to fit any other criteria? Is it just age or is, is there more than that? So in Fall, and that's, uh, it's different from city to city. But here in Fall River, if you have an historical house, you can, you can ask for a house plaque. And you, what, what you do have deems to pay historical? For 30 years, so 50 what, years, what 100 years? What deems that is, uh, I believe it's 55 years old or over 50 years old. Over, I'm going to go back and say 50 years old uh, because it's, that's actually designated by the Mass Historic Commission and they refer to properties as being over 50 years old as being historical. And a lot of people say, is that really old? And it is because architectural styles and the wood that was used 50 years ago makes a difference. 
And uh, so that's what it is. If you're not sure of that, look at your house. Does it have a brick foundation, a granite foundation, a field stone foundation? If it has one of those, it's, it's historical because they started using concrete forms after the 1920s, essentially. So if you, if you have a stone or brick foundation, you can be sure that it's historical. Mm -hmm. And how do people uh, get their house registered as a historical house and obtain a plaque like this? Uh, so you don't have to be registered to get a plaque. Uh, although a lot of properties were actually designated back in the 70s and 80s with the old Preservation Society. They did uh, historical surveys then. So uh, if you contact the Preservation Society, whether it's on email, and uh, I think you'll have our contacts at some point in time. Now, why don't you give us the website? Uh, the website is uh, Fall River Preservation. Uh, dot org. And we're also on Facebook. You know, we have a phone number, 508-673-4841. If you're interested in a house plaque or if you want to know more, you can contact the Preservation Society with your address. We can determine uh, usually at least closely to when the property was uh, built, and that's what we, we go by. And who does the research to put the name on the plaque as to who ha whose house it was originally? Well, <clears throat> this property here, uh, is in the Highlands. It's actually is an error, and that's why I have this extra plaque. So uh, it didn't go on the house. But um, it's usually the name is by either the most famous owner, or it can be just the original owner, because you know, the Traffords, the Durfees, the Bordens, the Remingtons are all, all well-known names, names in, in forever, the city. Right. But you don't have to be a Borden or a Durfee to get a house plaque. And it will either go by the usually the first property owner or the most famous property owner. And how far back do records go in terms of property ownership? I see that one is from 1845. Right. So that uh, we're we're working on a property now that was in the 1820s, and I th wow. I think that there's someone in the studio who has a, owns a property from the 1700s. Not me or you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, the Community Preservation Act. So the Community Preservation Act is a program that the state offers, and it allows communities to decide whether they want to be involved with it or not. And uh, entails uh, committing uh, a surcharge, so like a tax, but it's not, not legally a tax, but it's, it's a surcharge on your real estate. And uh, it's it's, a, it's uh, approved or not by voters. It's, it'll be put on, it would be put on the ballot and then the voters would come and decide whether they wanted to adopt it or not. Uh, but what's good about it, and you always hate to talk about, hear about raising taxes, but it can be a, a tiny amount. And the, money, the amount of money they talk about now is $19 per year per uh, homeowner. Uh, and the money that's raised, there's a certain amount that's matched by the state. And in the past, it's been 25% a year or more, which is really good. You've talked about investments, 25% mm -hmm. a year yeah, is a very great good investment. investment. Then that money that's raised, uh, it has to be used for historic preservation or open land conservation. And there's also a 10% minimum that has to go toward, um, uh, I'm losing my words, uh, low-income housing mm -hmm. or community housing. To support community housing. To support community housing. It does not mean that it has to be for additional community housing. It can go to capital improvements for, of community housing. Mm -hmm. I live in a house from 1861, and it was so much fun to go to Town Hall and see the records and find out who lived there. And after we found that information out, we discovered that there were still relatives of the people, the original people that owned our house, living in the neighborhood. And it was just a, a wonderful piece of history to find out of the place we were living. So I urge you all, if you think your house might be 50 years old or older, to definitely get in contact with the Preservation Society. And I think you'll be delighted in finding out the mystery that surrounds your particular house. I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the Anawan Six Fire Museum and sure. the work that the Preservation Society is doing there. Sure. So uh, the, there's a fire museum committee, and I think that they're close to creating their own 501c3 corporation status. But right now they're working with the Preservation Society with a dual mission. And the mission is to create a fire museum in Fall River and also to create a preservation project on Anawan Number 6. And if you're not familiar with which building Anawan Number 6 is, it's the uh, Victorian-style brick firehouse 
that's right at the bottom of North Park on North Main mm -hmm. Street. And for years, uh, um, for the last few years, it had been occupied by the traffic department and animal control officers. Um, but the fire museum has been pushing to get uh, a leasehold on that property, or at least part of it, to home their uh, fire museum. And so that, that building was 1873, and it's a Hotwell Swayze design, which is uh, also known for the other fire houses in the city, and also the Central Congregation uh, Church is a Hotwell Swayze design. I think also the Academy building was also. Mm -hmm. So uh, our part our, in that project is to preserve that building mm -hmm. as closely to original as possible. And what are the plans to bring in artifacts from firefighting in Fall River, That's in the right. country? That's it'll be, right. It'll be about the fires in the city, but also fire artifacts, including some of the older engines and uh, all the displays, the way the way that the city used to run a fire department, mm -hmm. which is pretty impressive when uh, they used to lug around these uh, fire hoses and uh, water with you know horses and carriages, mm -hmm. and uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. So um, if you were to talk a little bit about the kind of architecture that we see here in Fall River, New England, how would you call it? Is it all Victorian architecture? It isn't. Is there? It uh, isn't, and that's, there is Victorian architecture here in the city. But that's kind of, uh, it's a misnomer because Fall River's uh, architecture is very eclectic. It's historically significant, but it's eclectic. You have early American, uh, you've got the old Tory house down on the bottom of French Street, which is, you know, before 1750s, it's just the tiniest little incredible place. You've got the Lafayette Durfee house on Cherry oh, Street, which is also place. 1750s, uh, and then of course, we had the boom around 1840s, and after that, that led in every every 10 to 20 years, it brought in a different style of architecture, and that's what's great. As you drive up and down the streets, you see an incredible array. So Victorian, it's easy to say, oh, Victorian, but it's all different types. There's uh, uh, carpenters, Gothic, there's colonial revival, Italianate, uh, and it's just a great mix. So it's someone a great wanted to drive through Fall River and see some interesting buildings, where would you suggest they go? You know, you know if, you, if you do Rock and High Street, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. You've, you've rock got the, and High rock Street. Rock and High. That's probably the biggest mix. But to be completely honest, you can go through every single neighborhood in the city and you'll see a mix. And the only difference is, is that some neighbors because, neighborhoods, because they've had so much recent development, it's kind of more diluted. Right. But they're there. They're in every single neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And where's your favorite place to see in Fall River? Ah, I can't say. I, know, I, lo <laughs> I, I love it all. Uh -huh. I can tell you when I'm outside of Fall River, I like Savannah, Georgia. And I like Savannah, Georgia because of the architecture. I find that it's a city that's very similar to Fall River, but they're 30 years ahead of us in preservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would you see 30 years down the road in preservation if you had your way? You would see that the, city, the properties that are here in the city now that more people have recognized now that they're historical and important and it's done more work to maintain them. Great. Well, I urge you all to find out about where you're living, find out how you connect to the history of Fall River and certainly the Preservation Society can help you. I thank you very much, Jim, for being uh, my guest today. If you'd be so kind as to once again mention the website and the phone number and how people can arrange for a plaque. All right, great, thanks. So you can find us on the website at uh, fallriverpreservation.org. Of course, if you hit Google these days, you'll hit Fall River Preservation. It'll, it'll pop right up. Uh, we have a phone number, 508-673-4841. You'll find us on Facebook under Fall River Preservation. And our email is a real long one. It's fallriverpreservationsociety at yahoo.com. Fall River Preservation Society at yahoo.com. That was good. <laughs> well, this is Wendy Gar from Inside Fall River and Jim Soule from the Preservation Society of Fall River bidding you adieu. Thank you. <laughs>